All right, with that, hello everyone, and thank you for joining for this briefing on FuseNet's food security outlook update for Yemen, covering the period of December 2023 to May 2024. My name is Diana Bartone, the Acting Deputy Decision Support Advisor and Analyst covering Yemen on the DC side of FuseNet's early warning team. Today, I'll start by sharing key messages or key takeaways for the presentation, and then we'll look more closely at the details of the current situation, and then we'll turn to FuseNet's analysis covering the projection period um, looking forward through May 2024. In particular, our key assumptions for the projection period, and last but not least, our projected food security outcomes. So as many are familiar, the conflict in Yemen, which has been ongoing for more than nine years, has had significant detrimental impacts to the economy and local livelihoods. And despite the sustained reduction in conflict since the truce in mid-2022, recovery of livelihoods and income earning has largely been prevented by the impacts of the economic warfare between the major parties to the conflict, as well as several rounds of cuts to humanitarian food assistance since 2022. And the major parties to the conflict um, are the Sana'a-based authorities, which I will refer to throughout the presentation as the SBA, also known as the Houthis and Ansarallah, and the internationally recognized government, which I'll refer to as the IRG throughout the presentation. The SBA has been blocking oil exports from IRG-controlled areas using the threat of drone strikes since October 2022, um, when the truce officially expired. And that's been ongoing for well over a year now, and this is significantly exacerbating pre-existing shortages of government revenue and foreign exchange that the IRG has been facing um, for uh, many years. And this is contributing to continued depreciation of the local currency and food price increases in IRG controlled areas. And we expect this trend to continue throughout the projection period. And notably for the first time, due to this, the severity of the shortages, the IRG has halted public foreign currency, currency auctions in October of 2023. Another important recent development is that in early December 2023, the WFP paused all assistance to SBA controlled areas, affecting around 9.5 million beneficiaries. In IRG controlled areas, Meanwhile, there are around 3.6 million beneficiaries who are still receiving assistance or equivalent to around a quarter of their minimum energy needs. This is after beneficiaries have seen their assistance reduced several times in recent years, down from around 40, I mean, excuse me, 80% of their minimum energy needs prior to the reductions. Overall, poor households in Yemen as such continue to face severely limited livelihood options and high dependence on markets for food. Over the years, above average food prices and high competition for scarce income earning opportunities have caused millions to exhaust coping capacity, resulting in food consumption gaps characteristic of crisis, IPC phase three, or worse outcomes. During the projection period through May 2024, despite some periods of temporary support from the main cereal harvest of late 2023 and Ramadan beginning in March 2024, an overall trend of deterioration in food security is expected in both IRG and SBA areas due primarily to economic deterioration in IRG controlled areas and the pause in assistance in SBA areas. Emergency IPC phase four outcomes are expected to emerge in several SBA controlled areas where over half of the population previously received assistance. So for the current situation, I'll note that the current situation period for our food security outlook update analysis and report is December 2023. But during this presentation, I'll be sharing the most current data and information available for our current situation updates. And as usual, we'll start with the conflict. As many are aware, a nationwide truce entered into force in April 2022. Despite the expiration of this truce just several months later in October, Levels of conflict have remained comparatively low, though active conflict does continue to have negative impacts on food security, including by causing population displacement, movement restrictions, and access constraints along major roads. And looking to the map on the right, the conflict is now mainly impacting um, directly the frontline areas shown in red, um, and that's characterized by periodic upticks and uh, calming in intensity.
Although levels of conflict have remained low after the expiration of the truce, economic warfare actually intensified at the same time with detrimental impacts for food security itself. And the most consequential actions have been taken by the SBA against the IRG, including most notably the SBA's ongoing blockade of oil exports from IRG areas, which is denying the IRG what is typically its most important source of government revenue and foreign exchange. And this has significantly worsened what was already a pre-existing problem of persistent shortages of revenue and foreign exchange in IRG areas. And this graph showing trends in the average local exchange rate across IRG and SBA areas provides one clear indicator of the IRG's economic trouble, where in IRG areas, the real, um, the local currency, the Yemeni real, has continued to lose value. And this is driven by shortages of foreign currency, as well as the absence of strong government controls over the exchange market, and most recently, the halting of the foreign currency auction mechanism in October 2023, which has increased reliance on the parallel market for foreign currency to finance trade. And as of November 2023 in Aden, excuse me, um, which is the capital and main reference market for IRG areas, uh, the real had lost 34% of its value compared to the same time of the previous year. Meanwhile, the Sana based real has remained stable given better foreign currency availability as well as the government's ability to enforce a fixed exchange rate regime. Now, in Yemen, given the limited livelihood options after years of protracted conflict, poor households in both urban and rural areas are highly dependent on markets as one of their primary, if not the primary source of their food. Um, and this graph shows the cost of the minimum food basket, which is a basket of um, basic staple goods over time in IRG and SBA areas. And you can see how dramatically prices have risen since 2015 when the conflict began, particularly in IRG controlled areas. And a primary reason for this is that the country is highly dependent on imports for its staple food supply. And so depreciation of the local currency makes imports more expensive. And across the country, conflict has also caused disruptions to trade that have driven high transportation costs, which translates into higher. However, looking to the past year, um, you can see comparing the trends over the past year to the trends in previous recent years that the food price trends have been somewhat more favorable, um, mainly due to declining global food prices, which has contributed to, to declining food prices in SBA controlled areas in orange and a slowing of the rate of food price increases in IRG controlled areas. And in Aden, the cost of the minimum food basket in November 2023 was 9% higher than the prior year overall. While in Amana al Asima, Sana City, the cost of the minimum food basket was 8% lower than the same time last year. But notably, food prices are still above average in both markets and across the country. Despite these relatively more favorable trends, poor households have likely not benefited much from. Um, improvements in purchasing power given stable or declining wage rates over the past year, which is a deviation from the usual trend of increasing wage rates, um, as well as worsening disruptions to civil servant salary payments driven by shortages of IR IRG government revenue, and notably assistance cuts since the beginning of 2022, which have significantly increased households market dependence. Though currently rural farming households are experiencing some temporary seasonal support from the main harvest of cereals, um, which concluded in mid-November in highland areas and which is nearing conclusion in lowland areas. However, cereal crop production is expected to have been worse than last year in highland areas due to below average rainfall during Yemen's second rainy season, as highland areas generally farm in rain-fed terraces. Now we'll spend some time talking about trends in the provision of humanitarian food assistance, which has been received regularly by more than 13 million beneficiaries, over a third of the national population, quite significant, for several years, and um, which was commonly reported by poor households as their primary source of food and income during 
um, representative household surveys when they have been conducted. In late 2021, most households were receiving assistance intended to be equivalent to around 80% of their minimum basic energy requirements, though sharing of assistance with non-beneficiaries is a common practice in Yemen. However, beginning in 2022, the World Food Program reduced the frequency of assistance distribution cycles from monthly to approximately one every six weeks. And you can see that new pattern illustrated in this timeline showing distributions um, in 2023. You can see that each distribution takes more than one month with um, significant overlap. And at the same time, ration sizes per distribution have also been reduced over time, which we'll look at more closely later. And most recently and quite significantly, the WFP has paused all assistance to the 9.5 million beneficiaries in SBA areas effective in December 2023, following failure to reach an agreement with the local authorities on a reduction in benefic beneficiary number due to limited funds. And these governor at level maps show the estimated number of beneficiaries on the left and the share of the population on the right that received assistance prior to the pause. And looking at the map on the right, you can see that all the governorates around the exterior of Western Yemen, shown in the three darkest shades of orange, are governorates where more than 50% of the population either are in IRG controlled areas or were before the pause in SBA controlled areas receiving humanitarian food assistance. So this is quite a notable share of the, of the population. And in order to understand how the contribution of assistance to households total food has reduced over time, um, we have to consider both the reductions in distribution frequency and the reductions in rations per distribution, of course, um, which have occurred since 2022. And uh, I won't go over all the details here, but just want to point out that when averaged over time, beneficiary households have gone from receiving around 80% of their minimum energy requirements from assistance to receiving only around 20 to 30%. And then, of course, with the pause in assistance in SBA controlled areas, um, this has completely stopped. And while we don't expect that poor households will be able to fully compensate for the assistance reductions, we do assess that the full impacts of the reductions, especially of the pause in SBA areas, will take time to manifest given the temporary seasonal support from the main cereal harvest um, ongoing. However, we do expect that some poor households in SBA areas who received their last assistance distribution in September or October 2023, um, several months ago at this point, are already feeling the full impacts of widening consumption gaps at this point in time. And greatest concern exists um, for landless rural households who don't have any harvest, as well as other, other vulnerable households with limited and non-diversified income sources, um, such as displaced households living in settlements, um, vulnerable female-headed households um, without a regular income source. Now I'll turn to our analysis for the projection period through May 2024, starting with our key assumptions. Active conflict is expected to remain relatively subdued, similar to current levels. As most are likely familiar, the SBA has been threatening and attacking shipping traffic in the Red Sea, and we do expect that this will continue. However, minimal impacts on food security in Yemen are anticipated in the most likely scenario where the risk of escalation is carefully managed by both parties and no significant military action disrupts imports into Yemen. Um, however, this is a situation we're closely monitoring. And for more information on uh, that, this, you can reference FuseNet's Gaza page on FuseNet's website. Given conditions for crop production, we expect that farming households will generally exhaust their cereal stocks from the main harvest in January, February. And then in IRG controlled areas specifically, revenue and foreign exchange inflows are expected to remain similar to the current low levels. And we expect continued depreciation of the Aden-based real, rising fuel and food prices, and further disruptions to civil servant salary payments. 
We expect the provision of humanitarian assistance will continue near current levels with the current pause in SBA controlled areas sustained throughout the projection period. And this is because even if an agreement is reached between the WFP and the SBA um, soon, WFP will still require several months to reposition supplies and restart operations in SBA areas, making resumption during the projection period unlikely, though possible. And in March, April, poor households will receive some seasonal support from Zakat, um, which is a charity from better off households during the Ramadan and Eid holidays as is, as is typical during that time of year. And finally, these maps show our projected area level food security outcomes for the periods indicated. And I want to note quickly a reminder that the exclamation marks in our mapping indicate that the area level phase um, that is mapped would likely be at least one phase worse than the mapped IPC phase, if not for humanitarian assistance. And so in the December, January period on the left, we expect that crisis IPC phase three outcomes will remain widespread with humanitarian assistance preventing worse outcomes in several IRG controlled areas. And this is given limited livelihood options and income earning options amid above average food prices and assistance reductions. However, rural households will still have seasonal food and income from the harvest during this period, though this will only serve to temporarily reduce the size of the food consumption gaps that they would otherwise be facing due to the assistance reductions across the country and in IRG controlled areas, rising food prices. And I will note that while we map the most severe outcomes faced by at least 20% of the governorate level population, we do expect that some smaller share of the governorate level population is facing worse outcomes in several governorates in Western Yemen, particularly in SBA areas where assistance has not been distributed for several months. And then turning to the map on the right, by the February to May period, rural households are expected to have largely exhausted food stocks from the main cereal harvest during this time. And additionally, the January to March period is largely an agricultural off season in highland areas when access to income from agricultural labor will decline before increasing again in April and May. Meanwhile, in the lowland rural areas, poor households will have some seasonal support from the main harvest of fruits, particularly mangoes during this period, as well as seasonal and vegetable cultivation activities. But overall livelihood opportunities in lowland areas are generally more limited than in highland areas. And beginning in March, poor households will experience that temporary seasonal support from zakat during Ramadan, and um, then later during the Eid holidays. However, in both rural and urban areas under IRG control, further economic deterioration and rising food prices are expected to continue to drive an increase in the number of households facing food consumption gaps and crisis or worse outcomes overall. And in SBA areas, we expect deterioration to emergency will occur in several governorates given households overall inability to compensate for the loss of assistance amid limited income earning opportunities and eroded livelihoods, despite the periods of temporary seasonal support. And these areas that we expect to deteriorate to emergency are governorates where more than half of the total population previously received assistance. Though I'll note that in other governorates, an increase in the population facing emergency or worse outcomes is also anticipated. And with that, I would be happy to answer any questions um, from the audience. Thank you very much.